it's Ashley Bookish Sharma and I'm back with another video. This is a video that people have been asking me about for a little while, believe it or not. Like people have asked me, Ashley, do you have a recommendation video like for where to start for comics and graphic novels for beginners? And like I've done a couple of recs, but clearly since I've done those recommendations, I've read more comics and graphic novels. So today I thought that I would give you a like updated list of 10 graphic novels and comics that I think are great for beginners. But before we get started I would like to thank Anna Luisa for sponsoring this video. If you didn't know Anna Luisa is a fast growing sustainable jewelry company that is certified climate neutral so all of their jewelry is made with recyclable materials which I think is really really awesome because they are intentionally trying to lower their carbon footprint. So if you didn't know Mother's Day is right around the corner and I'm so happy that I am able to work with Anna Luisa to tell you a little bit about a sale that they have going on. So they have a Mother's Day sale in which they are having a buy one get one 40% off. So essentially it is pretty awesome because it means that you can get yourself jewelry and you can get your mother jewelry and you know something for you something for your mom. I don't know about y'all but I think that's a great deal and I am definitely looking forward to Mother's Day myself not only because I get to celebrate my mom but also because of the fact that I am a mom myself and so we're going to be taking the opportunity to celebrate Mother's Day with me my mom and my daughter which is three generations which is going to be amazing so as part of their Mother's Day sale I was able to choose three pieces from Anna Luisa and the first one that I want to show you is this bracelet which is the one that's going to actually be going to my mom I specifically picked this one out because of the fact that I liked the interlocking uh, circles that are unbreakable kind of like an infinity symbol and I think that it was just a really really great representation of the relationship that I have with my own mother and then of course here the other thing that I have is a ring that they sent me I particularly picked this one out for myself because I have not worn any rings in a very long time and I actually think that it goes well with the bracelet so I'm reconsidering whether I want to keep this one or actually give that to my mom as well and on this hand I have a, another ring which I think is really cool and one thing that I do want to mention is that what's really cool about the two rings that I ended up picking out is that they are adjustable rings which is great because I never know what my ring size is of my fingers and I feel like my fingers like expand and contract like all the time which is probably just in my head but it's so great to know that I can actually adjust these which means that I can wear them on any one of my fingers which is great. So like I said y'all this is a great opportunity to check out Anna Luisa. There is a link down in the description box below that you can use and it is my direct link to their website. Remember that the Mother's Day sale is buy one get one 40% off. If you can I would jump on it as soon as you can. It's a great sale and you do not want to miss it. Thank you so much to Anna Luisa for sponsoring this video. Alright y'all so let's go ahead and jump into the book so this video is not too long. I have a variety of selections. There are some horror things on here. There's some kind of like slice of life. There's fantasy. There's a little bit of like historical fiction and then there's some middle grade for my middle grade readers. So the first one that I want to talk about is Radiant Black which I was reading this one issue by issue. I highly recommend this one for people who are like fans of Power Rangers. It definitely gives Power Ranger vibes which is not surprising because the writer of this comic used to do Power Rangers. It is about this guy who is a millennial which is probably why I related to it so much. But he's a millennial. He is wanting to start a writing career but of course he just can't get the writing career right. He wants to you know make it big and it's just not really working out in his favor. So we see him like basically he's on his own and then he's having to move back home and really reconsider like what he plans to do with his life and I think that that's something that a lot of millennials can connect to especially just with what our expectations were and what we were told to do in terms of like getting an education and making it and having to then move back home because it's just not financially really it's not financially easy to make it out on your own especially when a lot of jobs are not paying enough to have any type of sustainable living. So basically we see him then interact with this really weird 
orb of what looks like power and then he becomes radiant black and I'm that's all I'm gonna say about it because I don't want to spoil anything about it but I think that there are a couple cliffhangers on this that make the story really interesting I think that radiant black currently has two trades out so if you are interested in really starting this series it's a great time to start it the next one that I have is the silver coin which is an interesting one for me to recommend because I've read one issue of the series Series, but I'm really looking forward to going back and finishing the rest of the series. Silver Coin is a horror anthology and I read the first one and it was stupid creepy and so every issue is they're separate stories which is why I say a horror anthology but they're all connected by this silver coin so there's something very mysterious about this coin and it doesn't really have good <laughs> it doesn't have really great things about it like whoever engages with the silver coin like things just don't work out the way that people expect them to work out so if you're looking for something that's more horror based you're looking for an opportunity to really get a test taste of a lot of different comic book writers and artists I think that this is a great place to start and this is really good for a lot of people who are like my horror fans which I the first person I think of of course is Brie from Lock Petition like I haven't told Brie about this one so I'm thinking that you know when I get finished filming this I may need to text her and let her know like hey you should check this one out I think you might like it and maybe we should read it together because I haven't read it yet well besides that first issue I haven't read any other issues outside of that the next one that I have a recommendation of is one that I am in the middle of reading I was reading it issue by issue but the trade is now out so I'm thinking of buying the digital trade of this if I cannot find it at my library because I'm I don't think my library has a copy of it and it is nuclear family so this one it takes place in the 50s it's really weird it comes off as if it might be kind of like a historical kind of fictiony type of comic book series but it's weird because literally they're all prepping for the possibility of there being a nuclear war of course you know this is happening in the 50s we're talking about the Red Scare we're talking about you know the Cold War tensions between America and Russia and some things happen and this is one of those comics that I'm like I really don't want to say much about it because I feel like if I say too much about it what's going to end up happening is that I'm going to accidentally spoil some elements this is one of those where it's best if you go in blind and you don't know anything because by the second it, it has to be the second or third issue you realize what actually is going on and it's mind-boggling I did not expect it to take that turn so I'm excited to continue to read this and finish out the series I don't know if it's gonna be like just a five issue when and done or whether it was continued I'm gonna have to look more into that but if you like if you like a little history a little sci-fi <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say if you like history a little sci-fi this might be one that you'd be interested in checking out the next one that I have on here is actually another horror which I'm very shocked about because I did not realize that I I ended up reading quite a bit like of horror comics and it is ice cream man which I need to continue because I believe I've read like the first at least two volumes of it if not three volumes of ice cream man and I really need to there's oh, there's got to be like in between six to eight volumes of the series now this is another one that's kind of like anthology set up except unlike silver coin you're not getting exposed to different writers you are just following these short stories about just people and this ice cream man is seemingly involved in every story and once again he's also not really a great person he's not a positive person to be around not good things happen to people who have interactions with the ice cream man so if you kind of like that theme kind of the same thing of interacting with something supernatural like you get in silver coin I think you probably will end up enjoying ice cream man as well and a lot of people that I know that are like comic tubers like really heavy on the on the comic side of YouTube they've enjoyed ice cream man so I definitely know like this is one that I need to continue more so like sooner than later the next one that I have is for readers who like a little bit of thriller and 
mystery and I don't well thriller is kind of a stretch here it, it might be a stress a stretch but I think the mystery element of it is there this is lady killer by joelle jones which is my first introduction to joelle jones i've now read some of the stuff that she's done like with dc but <laughs> lady killer is about a 1950s housewife who is a contracted killer so she's an assassin but she's a 1950s housewife so you have this woman who literally gets contracts to kill people and still is home by the time her husband gets home to make sure that dinner is on the table it is a very it's very interesting to see this in art form because it's very contrasting this woman who is leading this wild behind life where she's killing people and then she is putting on a show for her husband who is expecting to live in a 1950s traditional household this is only two volumes i was hoping and wishing so bad that joelle would consider doing a third volume but it's been years since lady killer has come out so i highly doubt we're going to get anything else so this is kind of like one of those series you read two volumes of it and you're pretty much done so if you're interested in that highly 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 recommend that you check this out now i mean you don't have to worry about following it issue by issue or having to wait for another trade to come out the next one that i have on this list is zodiac star force this is for people who like fantasy like really bright colored comics like very bright emphasis on like pinks and orange and blue like those uh i don't want to say because it's not really pastel but almost like highlighter colors like really bright i think that people would like really really run to this one if you like sailor moon and you enjoy that manga i think this is kind of like that in comic book form so zodiac star force is literally about a group of individuals who fight monsters but they draw their power from zodiac signs and i do believe that this one is two volumes i was hoping that maybe we were gonna gonna get a third volume but i think to my knowledge there's only two and that's super unfortunate because i really enjoyed volume one of this series i haven't read volume two which is wild that i haven't because it's been years since it came out but i had never read volume two of it because i was like waiting so hard for it to come out and then i thought that maybe we would get a volume three and so i kind of held off but now i think i'm going to go back and i'm going to read them but if you like fantasy or if you're a fan of sailor moon or if you like those like brighter art styles and comics because a lot of the art that i have with a lot of the art that's in the comics that i've just wrecked is going to be darker so you're working with very you know kind of dreary <laughs> gives a feeling of dread the the palettes that are chosen for those books is just really really ugh. but i mean you got to think about the topic at hand so it definitely makes sense and so if you are looking for something that's a little different than that then i definitely would recommend checking out zodiac star force the next one that i have on my list these are getting a little bit brighter now we are out of our dark phase of our comics and graphic novels the next one i'm going to talk about is mpls sound which stands for minneapolis sound and this is this was like a hidden gem i randomly saw that my library had purchased this so i was like i just want to read it and it is an ode to prince and so i am finding that i'm liking a lot of books that are really looking at the history of music in minneapolis and how prince really had a heavy hand in shaping the music that came out of minneapolis and so this follows a fictional band that is trying to be up and coming and they're heavily inspired by prince you get to see prince on page and how he interacts with them and it is just a fascinating fascinating graphic novel that really looks at the power and influence of prince as a musician so if you're looking for something that kind of mixes a little bit of fiction and non-fiction together i would definitely recommend this or if you're just interested in like music i think this is a great graphic novel for music lovers and i think music lovers will definitely appreciate it the 
the hard core like energy that has to go into not only like developing a group but maintaining that group and making sure that everybody is satisfied and putting out music that everybody's going to enjoy but also that you know music that these record companies are going to want to pick up it's just a very very complex and very well done graphic novel and so if you have not heard of mpls sound it's one that you should definitely check out the next one that i have is one that i actually discovered because I was doing a week-long reading vlog of just comics and graphic novels and so I was like I'm just gonna check this one out and that's Thirsty Mermaids which I was not expecting to like it as much as I did it literally it's about it's more than this but the premise is there's three mermaids they are a really really tight group of friends and they love to drink and so they spend a lot of their time getting drunk. They had found this alcohol that had fell off, fallen off a, sh a ship and then they run out. So the next thing that they have to do is they decide that they're going to transform themselves. They're going to go on land and they're going to find some of, <laughs> they're going to find some more alcohol. And it is really about them getting acclimated to being on land amongst humans like they're not used to it like the customs the small things that we I think you know like paying bills having a job like those are not foreign concepts to us but to a mermaid it's like having a what money like having a credit card like it, it was hilarious in some smart in some parts but it also tackled some really heavy topics like just depression and there were some I what I interpreted as possible suicidal thoughts and it was not what I was expecting when we got to that part of one character that was really really having some mental health struggles it's not what I like was like zoning in on I was like wow this really got deep really really quickly and I appreciate it because it balanced that lightness and that heaviness very very well and I loved it and I wish that we would get more of the story but it is what it is it's that one graphic novel but I really enjoyed it and this is another one to check out if you like those brighter colors or brighter hues um or it's just brighter palette choice when it comes to reading comics and graphic novels this is another one that heavily focuses on that with of course your emphasis on cooler colors like purple blue um and green those are definitely tightly woven into the story but i it was it was great i was not expecting it to love it i was not expecting to love it as much as i did but i'm glad that i did give it a chance and the second to last one that i have is a middle grade graphic novel this is great for the spooky season this is the seance tea party it is about a young girl who is struggling with growing up and fitting in and maintaining friends you know like middle school is that very awkward period where people change they're growing you don't maintain the same friend groups that you did in elementary school so our main character is really struggling with that and she calls forth this spirit and the spirit doesn't remember like who they are what happened to them but they end up being friends and my god the story was sad <laughs> I was not expecting to have the emotional response that I did by the time that I finished it, but my God, it was so gut-wrenching. I was just, I was so blown away. I was like, whoa, this is sad. <laughs> I'm so sad. This is depressing. Like Loki, this is like, it was, it had a, a good ending. I don't want to say that it didn't have a good ending. It did have a good ending, but like, the process of growing up and you know really defining what friendship is and learning about yourself and maturing oh man this one just tugged at my heartstrings great for the spooky season one of the best middle grade graphic novels that i think came out last year i think it came out october of last year somewhere around there so definitely give it a give it a read and the last one that i decided to include on this list is allergic allergic is one that i am so appreciative of because allergic focuses on literally what it's like to have allergies and while that may not seem like a big deal i think that this book is a great resource for kids and families or just like adults 
who have struggled with allergies. It's a young girl, she wants a pet so bad, she wants a dog, and that's when her family finds out that she is allergic to a lot of animals. And so she can't have this dog and she has extreme allergic reactions. She can't interact with animals the same way that everyone else does. She has to consider getting allergy shots. And when I was reading this, I was like, oh my gosh, this was me as a kid. Like I could not have pets growing up because I was too allergic. I am allergic to dogs. I'm allergic to cats. Like literally if someone touches me and they have dog hair on them, I break out. It is, it is that intense for me. Same thing with cats. Like I don't do well. And surprisingly, my daughter got tested for allergies and she's quote unquote not allergic to the same stuff that I am like in terms of animals, which I think is really interesting. But when I had to do my allergy test, you know, like they, they poke you in the back, I lit up like a Christmas tree. So growing up for me, when I would hear about people and still to this day, like people talking about like, oh, like, you know, my dog and, I, and you know my fur baby and I'm like ah. you know I feel like my life would have been <laughs> different in some ways if I would have been able to have a fur baby but I just I couldn't grow up like everyone else and that is a huge theme in this book is that our main character cannot grow up like the other kids that she knows because she has allergies and it impacts her relationships with people she struggles with her friendships because she just she has to function so differently from everyone else so that she is you know she's not having these reactions and also like learning that they are not going to go away like you know she's getting these allergies shot and the daughter having to explain to her like this is going to lessen the, sy the symptoms and it helps your body kind of build up its tolerance but it's never gonna 100 percent go away and knowing that and having to deal with that i think was very hard for her but great middle grade graphic novel if you're interested in checking that one out. Alright y'all so that's it. Those are the recommendations of graphic novels and comics that I think that you should definitely check out if you're new to comics and graphic novels. If there's any specific videos that y'all would like to see in terms of me talking about comics and graphic novels, y'all know it's my passion point. Y'all know I could talk about comics and graphic novels all the time which is why this week's videos probably have been super geared towards comic graphic novels and manga because why not? So if there's any specific videos that you would like to see about comics and graphic novels definitely let me know in the comment box below don't forget that to get access to that 40 percent buy one get one 40 percent off sale for mother's day for anna louisa make sure you click that link down in the description box below it'll be right there as soon as you scroll down to it and as always if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you want to see more content from me click the subscribe button hit the bell for notifications and i will be back with another video soon